Hello, everybody. I want to thank you for joining me once again here at Evolutionary Energy Arts. And I wanted to talk about what is going on in our world in general with the Earth changes and with what is actually happening in consciousness. I don't know how many of you have actually felt differently or are viewing things differently than you did in the past. There's a lot of people that are going through this right now. For one thing, it's undeniable that something is up. You know, obviously we have a lot of things going on politically, but if, even taking the politics aside, even taking what's going on, you know, and across the world politically aside, there's something else going on. I mean, obviously there's physical changes going on in the world around us. We could see it. It's tangible. You know, the weather has gone from being, oh, well, that's the weather, how it is around here. It's this way one way, one day and then something totally different. Another, you know, I've lived in several sections of the United States, for instance, and that's what people say in, in Ohio. They say the same thing in New England. We'll say kind of the same thing in the Carolinas. Um, but even like here in Florida now, you know, today our high temp is going to be like 65 and uh, where we were in the 80s, you know, pushing 90 already. So even so, more changeable. Last night it dropped into the 40s and was pretty darn chilly for here. Um, we can't deny that the weather is odd. And uh, we know we've been sold this bill of goods about global warming. And we know that so much of that's been about political issues. And perhaps some of it has been to get us off track with what's really happening because you know that the powers that be don't want people panicking in the streets you know so if they were to say something like hey everybody the sun well it's failing it's failing rapidly you know and perhaps it's not even going to recover everybody would be in this uproar and panic and who knows what would happen with society and I'm not saying that that's the case. Although there are some people that say that. Uh, I was introduced to a topic that I didn't even know existed in the past. And uh, I guess I was just missing out on this. Uh, have you heard of a sun simulator? Well, there's a lot of people that believe that what you view in the sky is not really the sun at all. It's actually a sun simulator because the sun itself is basically fizzling out and it's it's not able to give us enough heat and light now for us to survive. So we have these artificial constructed suns that are put up in the sky and that are sending us light and heat. And, you know, people, I think a lot of people will recognize that the sun seems different, that the sun seemed more yellow years back when we were kids and i don't know how old you guys are uh but i'm in my 50s and you know it really did seem different it seemed like the light was different now is that just something in my own consciousness and some other people's consciousness i don't know i find it kind of hard to believe in a sense that there's really a fake sun yet i've seen a lot of photos of you know, definitely something up there, and some will say it's Planet X or Nibiru, uh, but there's definitely some very, very interesting photos and theories going on with that. Of course, we have more than I could ever remember a ton of people believing in flat Earth, and that hits me as totally bizarre. And if flat Earth is true, then, you know, our whole reality has been just so mind-bogglingly changed, altered. I mean, we've been so, what well, we do know, we have been lied to. I mean, we do know that the reality that we see is, you know, it's, it's been constructed for us precisely to keep us in the dark. This is sleep. You know, I always have thought that the zombie movies that we see out there they're really talking about the masses the fact that most people are like zombies they're not fully awake they're not fully conscious they are just going through 
emotions without really being self-aware. And so it's an interesting thought. How, how much are we really like zombies? And, and how much have we been manipulated? And what really is real? You know, scientists are leaking now that, yeah, apparently we probably do live in this giant holographic reality that is really not even true. It's, it's just a hologram. It's a reflection of the real, true reality. And, you know, scientists are now saying this. And this is exactly what Buddha was saying 2,500 years ago, that he realized everything was illusion. Everything is Maya. And so what is real and what is not real? That's a hard question to answer. And there are still so many people that are, are completely asleep, but many, many more people are waking up every day to what's going on in our reality. And if I had to say, what do I feel is the biggest concern? I would say that it's probably the pole shift, you know, as far as a physical concern, because they are saying that it's, it, we are in a pole shift now. And if they're admitting that, then we probably are pretty far in. And from what I have heard, you know, I've heard it said and read, that from 1842 to 2000, we lost 10% of the magnetosphere, which the magnetosphere, again, is our protective shield, one of our protective layers um, that protects us from outside radiation. Uh, if there were no magnetosphere, we would end up more like Venus, and there really wouldn't be any life as we know it of our type. Um, now, between 20... 2000 and 2015, supposedly we lost another 5%. And now I'm hearing that from 2015 to now we've lost another 5%. So that brings us to 20% and that's speeding up. And <clears throat> that when we get to 50% even, we're in trouble. And it, during a pole flip, it drops down to about 15%, 10 to 15% typically before it flips. And it, it doesn't always flip as we have talked about. Sometimes it tries to, and then it doesn't hold. And that's the case right now because pole flips, pole reversals are like, a, a, they should be every 200,000 years thereabouts. And it's been 780,000 years. So it's been a very long time, according to scientists. Do we know this for certain? Well, you're gonna have to trust the scientists. And if we are living in a hologram in reality, and not in this 3D world that we think is so real, that we've been brought up to think is so real, then maybe you don't want to trust anybody, which might be a good idea. Trust your own inner voice, I would, I would say. You know, trust, trust your, your own personal guidance from above. Yet, undeniably, there's changes happening. There are tremendous changes happening. And so I am definitely somebody that thinks that if it's a grand solar minimum, which we know, that's probably for sure. However, every single time we're talking about this, what they're actually measuring is appearing to be, have the potential to be something even more, you know, than just a grand solar minimum and uh, something that could bring about something more severe. and. We should prepare for that. We should realize what's happening because, you know, the earth can go into a change and all of a sudden, just in a, you know, twinkling of an eye, as the expression goes, we could be living in a very different world climate wise. It does appear to come in and change pretty rapidly. But still, I think the bigger thing than that is the pole shift. And there's so many people that will say, you know, hey, it's going to be a magnetic pole shift, nothing to worry about. It's not going to cause tsunamis. It's not going to cause any real destruction. It might not even be something you could perceive at all. It might just screw up our GPSs and that's it. it if you look at it closely enough, you know, and, and you, you analyze it from all different angles, it doesn't seem to hold, you know, it, for one, we're going to have volcanoes going off like you can't imagine. And they are. There, There's volcanoes going off like all around the world. They're waking up in droves. 
They're worried about the one over in Montserrat now. Um, there's volcanoes going everywhere. Kilauea lost uh, part of the side of the volcano and tons of lava has spilled into the Pacific Ocean. And that same thing, if that was to happen in La Palma and the Canary Islands, we would be looking at a tsunami that could be hundreds of feet high, if not higher, and hitting the entire east coast of the U.S. as well as the U.K., Spain, parts of France, uh, Africa, and South America. And so that's, uh, that's a scary scenario. The vol volcano issue is happening. There's no denying that. There are signs that Yellowstone is, is stirring, as well as like all the major ones, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, uh, Mount Rainier, and you know vol volcanoes up in Iceland are stirring, volcanoes in Alaska. We have quake swarms all over the Caribbean plate. We have quake swarms up there in Iceland around those volcanoes. It's, it's, there's tons of uh, swarms going on up in Alaska as well. And we have multiple volcanoes going off in Indonesia, Sumatra, um, you name it. I mean, it's really going off. There's one going off in Japan now uh, that is, is shooting a lot of debris into the sky. So the cool weather, it's here and it's going to stay here. And, you know, what we're facing, I, I truly believe we are in the midst of a pole reversal, pole shift. And I think that what people had seen, like different prophets and prophecies um, about these pole shifts, you know, and, and what's going to happen with the earth changes, it feels true in my heart. Um, I know many, many people have had dreams and visions. There are so many people right now that are having dreams and visions of this. And thank you guys for sharing. Um, you know, anybody that shares, I will keep anonymous. And I have been getting them coming in from subscribers and as well as, you know, other sources, you know, lots of emails coming in, just sharing their dreams and what they're experiencing. And you know what? Our collective subconscious is speaking to so many of us right now, letting us know, be prepared. You know, there are changes coming. And, you know, we might have to, at a drop of a hat, just pick up and move to higher ground. Um, I absolutely, excuse me, with the nets coming in, I have the doors wide open because it's just such a beautiful day here. Um, living here in Florida, you know, I love Florida and, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the United States, really. Um, I, I love being by tropical places, tropical waters, but I've dreamed since I was a kid that at some point, I'm to go to a more desert situation, and I've seen this, and I've seen myself growing food and living in a kind of a makeshift community of similar like-minded people that are all binding together, coming together in order to, you know, build something and also to survive something. So this is something that has been in my subconscious all my life because I started to receive these, you know, dreams and these visions when I was a teenager, you know, I'd say, you know, as early as 12 years old. So, you know, I know where I'm supposed to go when the shit hits the fan. So it might be different for all of us. And so that's something to to research, you know, and to figure out and to connect with your higher self, connect with, you know, the higher powers that you believe in, whatever you call them, you know, and whatever way you do, you know, prayer, meditation, whatever it is, um, look for inner guidance because the time could be really quick, you know, where in some locations, you know, people are going to have to pack up and move. And a lot of people say, well, I, I can't do it. How can you ask an average person to just pack up and move? It's all up to you. I, you know, last year when Irma came, it was a tough decision. Do we stay or do we go? You know, what do you do? And it was more at the last moment decided, you know what? 
been wanting to take a camping trip out west. Let's take a camping trip out west. So we went to New Mexico. And um, luckily, you know, we survived Irma and the, the house survived Irma. Uh, but, you know, that's one of those things. So, you know, people in the Keys, you know, do you stay or do you go? Look at Puerto Rico. Look what happened with Puerto Rico. And look what happened with some of the smaller islands out there. Um, you know, it's up to each person, you know, to decide what you're going to do. But I do think that a wise thing is getting in contact with whatever higher powers you believe in. Try to develop your intuition, develop your connection to them, and look for guidance. You know, so we, we should take still time each day. If you want to take it as prayer, take it as prayer. Whoever you pray to. Or if you want to view it as still meditation, do that. If you like yoga, you know, embrace that time in yoga and just get to your quiet zone and be receptive. And, you know, ask, ask questions, you know, ask, where should I go? You know, there's so many different ways of doing things. I've done tarot cards uh, for like 30 years. So whenever I have a major question, I'll usually ask the cards and they've always guided me all the time. It guides me clearly. So I just wanted to share this with you because there are so many things going on right now that it is completely undeniable that we have major earth changes upon us. And I, for one, think the biggest item in those earth changes is the pole shift because we don't know what it's going to look like. Some people envision a scenario that's like the movie 2012. You know, very, very scary, mile-high tsunamis inundating continents. Other people don't think it's going to be anything like and, and there are many that say that we can affect what happens. And so our positive vibes, our positive thoughts, our positive energies can mitigate that, make the earth changes less severe, and help us to survive and become a better community afterwards. So these are all things to think about, and I just wanted to share that with you. I would also strongly recommend, as far as preparations go, just treat at least, you know, take the precautions as if you were going to have no power for two to four weeks. What would you do? Well, maybe get a generator if you could. Uh, maybe look into alternative sources of energy. Maybe stockpile something, stockpile supplies. You know, if you eat rice and beans and things like that, get 25 pound or 5 pound bags so you have, you know, things on hand. It's for sure. Some people prefer to go to meals ready to eat uh, method. Have a good stockpile of foods, basic necessities, first, first aid kits. Um, candles and electric versions of that. There's so many cool LED lanterns and flashlights around now that last a ton and they give off great light. Have camping equipment available. Have um, you know good old fashioned cast iron pots and pans. They you know, are great. And uh, in the worst case scenario, you could hit somebody over the head with them if they're trying to threaten you. You know. Um, there's so many different things you could do to prepare and to get ready. Um, but I do think in these times, the most important thing is really more of a spiritual preparation. But I would still prepare spiritually, physically, mentally, in every way. And again, no fear, because this is a time of purification, as the Native Americans say. The great purification is beginning. So when we come out of this on the other side, we're going to be a better people. And we're going to have a better community. And we're going to be rid of everything that has been plaguing us as far as having half of 1% control the entire world. We'll have a new system. And it will be a much fairer system. It will be a, a true system of by the people, for the people. So all things to consider. Uh, I wish everybody always the best. Make your preparations. Be prepared in every way. And latent love to you and Godspeed. And I look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon. Take care.